Hi, my name is Brent Brooks. I'm a senior pastor of Reno Christian Fellowship here in Reno and uh, got the honor of being the organizer for the One Cry event we're doing today. Uh, God has been doing something very intriguing in Reno for the last 18 months and I'm just seeing God crossing all of these boundaries and bringing people together in ways he hasn't before. And you know, the purpose of the One Cry event today was really to bring the leaders together. God is moving our people and the question is whether the leaders are going to jump on and what the Spirit's doing. And that's what we're seeing today. That's the goal of what we're doing this One Cry event. That's why we brought everybody together. See if we can get the leaders actually leading where God has already gone before them. We have 375 people here today representing 60 different ministries. And I'm convinced if we all come together, we all cry out to God, the Holy Spirit's gonna make it very clear to us what the next steps are. And I think we're gonna find a tremendous move of pastors to unite, to work together more than we've ever seen before. And we've got some vehicles here to help us do that. But I, I think we're gonna see God doing something in Reno beyond what any of us ever anticipated or expected. Push out the powers of darkness and that light would fill our community and the revival would come to our churches, Lord. That your spirit would come, that your spirit would fall upon us, that we would have a new day of Pentecost in which we are changed and transformed. And for the next 30 years and beyond, we would see what happened in the book of Acts as you change home after home after home, school after school after school, church after church after church. Lord, make us into your army, change this town, pour your spirit down and revive us again, we pray in Jesus' name, amen. Okay, whom do we fear? Welcome to our program, Demonstrations of Faith. I have a wonderful guest with us today, Pastor Brent Brooks from Reno Christian Fellowship. I asked him to come on the program because there's a, an amazing event that's about to take place in about a week from now, and it's something that you're not going to want to miss. And so it's so good to have you on the program, Pastor Brent. Thanks, Dave. Praise it's my God. delight. Yeah, um, we were having a conversation uh, before the, the cameras started to roll, and we were talking about uh, a little bit of your background you, before you came to Reno and started pastoring the church that you're pastoring. Uh, you've, had, you've come with a lot of experience and, and uh, a real passion uh, to see the body of Christ come together. And so I asked, uh, like I said, I asked you to come on the program because we want to talk about this this event, this One Cry event, and I just want you to take liberty to share from your heart um, what God has been showing you about what he's doing in, not only in Reno, but I think in other parts of the world, but particularly in Reno, because this is our assignment right here. Particularly in Reno. Yes. You know, there's some interesting things that have been happening over the last few years, really about a two and a half year period that I know of, but uh, I've been in Reno eight years this month. Um, and uh, I became connected with you and the Spirit-filled pastors who meet every Wednesday and then once a month to pray. So they've been doing it for 13 years. But um, there are a couple of, uh, several other things began to happen about two and a half years ago, almost simultaneously. We had um, Acts 4 started, which is a lay-led, right. not pastor-led prayer movement that started that's been meeting for two and a half years, moving from church to church, mm -hmm. meeting monthly. At virtually the same time as that started, Awaken started, which is a ministry dealing with our sex trafficking problem here in Reno. Uh, virtually the same time, the African-American pastors came together in ACON, right. uh, the African-American Clergy Council of Northern Nevada. Um, they had never been collectively together, meeting regularly. You know, they had troubles getting along. Right. The Hispanic pastors came together in Amen. 
Asociación Ministerios Evangelico de Nevada, uh, and they hadn't been together before. And so all of these groups began to come together, and uh, I started meeting with the, the Spirit Phil group. I right. started meeting with uh, Acts 4. I started meeting with Awake, and I saw all these things begin to happen. And uh, then I actually came in touch with a national movement called One Cry through just some connections. I got to know their leadership, and I began to wonder, is there some way to bring what they're doing together with what's happening here and so we did that last year. We had the first event last year, the first One Cry event in right March. Right about the same time. Almost exactly the same time. I think it was like March 2nd last year. Yeah. And uh, we had uh, a massive response. Uh, I think it was like 370, 375 church leaders from 65 ministries came together. And there was something about this desire to have the whole church together, you know, black, white, Hispanic, Asian, Pentecostal, evangelical. We got in the same room. We hadn't been in the same room before, and and that's something unusual. I'll tell you something right now. I just get chills just thinking about what you said and remembering uh, that event last year, and I in in some of our conversations that we've had with some of the other pastors that were there. Um, there there's no other way to describe it, at least for me, that the atmosphere was just electrified and charged with. Mm -hmm. Well, just the presence of God, because there was so many different Christian ministries and groups from different denominations. And that, you know, people want to know, are there still miracles? And I'm going to tell you right now, definitely, because that really, that's a miracle of God in the times that we live in to see um, that, that, that kind of uh, unity. It's just, it's not common, is it? No, it's, it's not. And, and it was fascinating to me. You know, I think something was happening before a word was spoken, a song was said, just people coming yes, in the room and yes. going, they're here, they're here, they're here. We're all here together. Yeah. And uh, it just built throughout the day with the worship and the teaching and all that was going on. But it is something fairly unique to come together across that broad a spectrum. As right. I'm talking to the national people with one cry, actually they're bringing out pastors to observe what's happening in Reno. We've got pastors coming from Syracuse, Detroit, Chicago, St. Louis, San Antonio, Dallas, uh, Sacramento, Seattle, San Francisco, all coming to see, okay, how did this happen? How do you do this? What What's going on in Reno? So the eyes of the country right now, people who are praying are on Reno. Hey, Amen. Praise God. Well, this is just a, you know, uh, a manifestation of God's glory, and, and uh, it's a true answer to prayer of so many groups that have been praying, crying out. And, and I like, I think the name, just One Cry, really tells the story. And last year, though, it was primarily all pastors and, and church leaders and Correct. church staff and so on. But this year, it's a little different, so I'm going to well, let you talk about that. Last year, we aimed at leaders because we wanted the leaders right. to catch up with what was happening with their people. Sure. Uh, secondly, we aimed at leaders. Honestly, my church could not hold everybody if we went broader. This year, uh, Grace Church has just moved into their new sanctuary. You can see 1,100. So we're casting the net broader. We would like to see anybody who has a passion for God to bring revival to Reno Sparks to come and join us. And that's the thing. Just anybody that has a passion for, for, for revival, that's exactly right. And I think that there's a lot of folks that are watching by television today that you do, you have that passion, you have that desire. And this is this event that's going to be taking a place uh, taking place a week from now, Saturday, March first, March the first, eight to three, is a is an opportunity. I believe, no doubt, that it is a monumental event that's going to take place, and you don't want to miss out on this opportunity to be there. You want to be able to say, and I know this, you're going to want to be able to say, I was there, mm -hmm. and and so uh, I encourage you to to. Uh, contact us through the information that's on the television there or the f make a phone call and make your reservation to be there. Maybe you might want to talk a little bit about that as well. Well, you know, I can remember walking out last year, Dave, and I can remember talking to you and you had this look in your face said, wherever this is going, I'm all in. <laughs> count, count, me, count me in. I'm in. And, and a lot <laughs> of people right. left like that. 
you know, the day uh, we're charging ten dollars, and we need to have people pre-registered so we can do that. That's really just for the cost of food. It's being the event is being paid for by donors. It's being provided for, but uh, we'll provide a continental breakfast that'll include things like muffins from Mimi's. Uh, we'll have lunch. Newman's Deli is providing the lunch. The food will be good. Snacks and beverages throughout the day. But what you're going to hear, uh, you're going to hear from from. Uh, Wor uh, you know, an Anglo worship band. You're going to have a Hispanic worship band worshiping bilingually. Uh, you're going to have a black gospel choir. Uh, you're going to have some local speakers, black, white, Hispanic. You're going to have a couple of national speakers uh, who really are up on this subject revival. They've devoted their lives to this. We're going to have a, a tremendous time of worship and prayer at the end uh, where we're asking to see God move. We're asking to see God change our community, asking to see this this mystery that we call revival. Yes, that's right. You know, and the thing is, is people need to understand that, that uh, like the Bible says, it says the foot doesn't say to the hand, I have no need of you, that every part of the body has a purpose and a function. And uh, that's how God uh, uh, sees his church body. And um, we embrace one another's uh, callings and we respect and honor one another um, versus criticize and, and persecute another man's assignment. And that's one of the things I brought up with our pastors, um, with the, the, the Spirit-Filled Pastors Group when I was invited to be a part of that. I, you know, I know that they're in the past, not in this particular group, but in other places, it, it was just sad to see um, men of God, men and women of God come together and persecute another man's assignment. And I said, I will not be a part of any group that uh, doesn't show respect and honor for somebody else's assignment. And uh, there's just this idea sometimes among, I don't know, pastors or leaders that think that what they're doing is is all, is what everybody should be doing, and and in all reality, I have my assignment and the message that God has put in my heart to to focus on and maybe specialize. And you have yours, and and I respect and honor that. And, mm. and but we see so much, I guess, maturity that's taking place in leaders across this region concerning that. What, what are your thoughts about that? Well, I, I think there really is something new beginning to happen. Um, pastors, like everybody else, they're capable of arrogance, pride, yeah. envy, yeah. bitterness. Uh, and, you know, we do have some histories of churches in, in Reno where there's been splits and fragmentations and all these things happen. But what I'm seeing more and more is an acceptance of each other, a love for each other, a willingness to support each other. And we don't all have to agree on everything. We just don't. That's now, right. You know, but, but, but we are called to love each other. We are called, you know, you read uh, John 17, you know, that they may be one as the Father and I are one. Uh, we used to sing back in the 60s, uh, they will know we're Christians by our love, but so much now, you know, they'll doubt we're Christians by our divisions and our bitterness. But I see the Spirit moving and doing something in Reno that doesn't happen very often, where that's breaking down. And, and that's where revival begins to start, where those barriers break Correct. down. With heavy hearts, we recognize that the church in America is in a state of spiritual emergency. Like the churches warned in Revelation, we have become lukewarm and compromised, and the light of our witness has grown dim. We confess that despite access to more resources and biblical teaching than any other group of believers in history, we are not characterized by the supernatural power of the Holy Spirit. And we acknowledge our lack of widespread impact for Christ on our lost and disintegrating culture. But God is waking us from our slumber and mobilizing us to pray earnestly for revival. Together, we desire to travel the narrow road of brokenness, humility, and repentance. In desperation for God, we cry out for the extraordinary work of the Holy Spirit in our day. We believe that true revival is the only hope to reverse our spiritual recession and enable us once again to display the beauty of Jesus Christ and His gospel throughout the world. Because we believe that only Christ can save, heal, and revive, 
we pledge to turn in humble repentance from every sin God reveals to us. Pray with urgency for spiritual recovery and awakening. Unite, Unite with other believers in spreading the hope of revival. Lord, send revival and let it begin in me. You know, revival's a mystery. Yeah. I, you know, it, right. it's... And you've studied uh, quite a bit about it. So. I, I have over the years. You know, probably 30 years ago, I read my first book, A History of Revival. Mm -hmm. And it just blew me away to see how God changes a community, how people keep on gathering for prayer, how they change, and how the whole ethos, the whole community, the nature of the community changes. And... Uh, it, it's it's this fascinating mystery because God alone decides when revival happens, but it has something to do with when our faith meets His faithfulness, and from different traditions we can describe that in lots of different ways. Sure, but right. it, but, it, but it's like um, you know I was our church yesterday we we're we we're in the Gospel of Mark and I was in Mark six and there's this horrifying passage Mark six five that says uh, and he was able to do no works of power there. Literally, he didn't have the power to do works of power there. And why? Unbelief. Because of their unbelief. Uh, unbelief. And, uh, you know, I was describing it yesterday, it's, it's kind of uh, like the two poles of a battery. You have the positive and negative. And our faith has to meet his faithfulness. And we can describe that lots of different ways. But he's looking, he's waiting. And, and one of the things I got from studying revival is, okay, it has happened. It can happen. It will happen somewhere. Mm -hmm. Why not Reno? Why not? Why not us? Sounds like something. It sounds really familiar, actually. It wasn't that something that was going on in the Super Bowl with the Seattle Seahawks? Why not us? I think that that's uh, what. I'm not was. a Seahawk fan, so don't, <laughs> don't, don't, don't send me there. I'm sorry. Yeah, I don't want to go there either. I don't want to relive that, by the way. So, But, uh, but really, it does get back down to that. Why not us? And, you know, I, I, I've always um, believed this and talked about it for years. I've been pastoring now here uh, almost 20 years. And, and I, I said to my congregation several years ago, I said, you know, I, I really would like to see this city be known for a mighty move of God. That's Reno, Reno. Oh, that's the place where the a great move of God took place versus that's the place where all of the gambling and, you know, prostitution is. Sin I city. think we need to, yeah, exactly, Sin City. And I think that, uh, you know, like like this, the statement was, can anything good come out of Nazareth? Well, the question is, can, any, can anything good come out of Nevada or, or Reno, Nevada? And absolutely, a great, great things are actually coming oh, out of this, you know, I, this I, region. I love this city. Yeah. I love being here. Amen. I absolutely feel I'm called here. But, you know, we've had a lot of things in our past that need to change. And, and we're right. starting to see it. it. It's amazing. I've seen the flip of the, of the political figures, uh, the power brokers in this city on the sex trafficking issue. Mm -hmm. You know, we used to just wink and say, well, it's on top of our cabs. We advertise it in our airport and all of that. And all of a sudden, all the power brokers were down there before the airport board saying, no, we don't want this to be the image of our city pressure on the cabs to stop putting the signs you know two out of three companies have stopped putting those signs on top of their cabs unthinkable right three to five years ago in this town yes. you know of all places in nevada because of the reputation that we have and why people come to this say this place and all of a sudden i think through prayer right the atmosphere the spiritual atmosphere has changed yeah drastically yeah, it's, uh, the, the enemy of God is being, and, and d the darkness is being pushed back. Mm -hmm. And uh, the light of the gospel is shining through. And like you said, it's, it's, it's affecting every, every part of our society and our culture. And, mm -hmm. and uh, you know what? We're going to keep on keeping on uh, with this. And, you know, getting back to the, uh, the one cry thing, looking back last year and just, just the, uh, the sense of, of, of the heart of God which was really just rooted in love. 
mm -hmm. because there was just so much love there for one another and acceptance and coming from all the different backgrounds. Uh, it's just, I'm, a, I'm just excited about what is going to take place um, this week, later on this week, Saturday. Mm -hmm. And it's not too late for you to, to get in and, and um, make please your reservation. Us. Is that right? Please, please join us. Please join us. We'd love, you know, we need you, as a matter Yeah, we'd of love to have you. But, you know, what happens is when God's people come and gather for prayer, and, you know, somehow a sovereign, omniscient, yes. omnipotent God has asked us to be part of the process. Somehow there is something about prayer that is needed in the process. It's the faith we bring from our side, meeting his faithfulness, and the power of God pours down. Cities are changed. Churches are changed. Lives are changed. Schools are changed. We need that. We want that. And we need your prayers to be a part of that. You know, and the Bible says this, that, that we are, all of us, that are members of the body of Christ, that we are co-laborers together with God, that he's not going to do whatever he does. He's not going to do it without us, see? And it is a partnership, and so we are inviting you to come and labor together in the Spirit and in unity for the, the, the perfect plan and will of God for this region. And, and uh, the Bible says that we all have our supply of the spirit of Jesus Christ. And so we want to, we want to invite you, come please, and bring your supply of the spirit of Jesus Christ together in unity to pray together, to cry out the one cry event. And uh, again, this is a, I believe, a monumental uh, thing that's going to take place on Saturday, March the 1st at Grace Church. And uh, what, again, are the times? That, 8 to 3. We'll start with the Continental Breakfast at 8, and yes. we'll try to end precisely at 3. We know people have busy time. Right. And you know, last year, I was when I came in, I looked, and I got Continental Breakfast. This is a continental continental feast. It really was. It was so good. And, and um, you know, just speaking from the natural side, the food was great. The sandwiches were, were great, and, and just the fellowship and, and, and the harmony. And so, uh, man, I'll tell you what, this should be a priority. Uh, if it's possible, if you can change your schedule and be there, if it's possible, I think that you should. And uh, don't miss out on this opportunity because it really is a great opportunity in God, uh, a great opportunity to make an investment into the work of the kingdom of God and it's also a great opportunity to be able to say, yes, I was there when God moved like he did at the One Cry event. It's a, it's a taste of heaven. It really in, is. In heaven, people from every tribe and tongue and nation are going to be there, and it can start here. And we can start experiencing now, and we can start to appreciate each other, to love each other, and we can prepare for what we're going to be forever. We're going to always be worshiping God. Yes, that's people, right. every tribe and tongue and nation. This gives us an opportunity for that to start now. Is that right? You know, and it goes back to what Paul said in his prayers, the second prayer in Ephesians chapter 3. He says, I bow my knee unto the father of the family, not families, plural, but family. It's one family in heaven and on earth. And so uh, we are just one family. And um, again, it's, it's, a, it's a great time that we're going to have in the Lord. Well, Pastor Brent, is there anything else you want to say before we wrap this up? Hmm. You know, I go to that same prayer frequently in benedictions and, and, yeah. and just a different part of it where it talks about it. Now to him who is able to do exceedingly abundantly beyond all we can think or ask yes. or even imagine. To him be the glory in the church both now and forever. That's what this is about, is seeking to see his power do something in our community beyond what we could ever imagine because he can do greater things than we've ever imagined, than we've ever conceived when our faith connects with his faithfulness and revival comes. So join us as we seek it. Yep, join us. Don't miss this great opportunity. Well, again, we thank you for joining our broadcast today. And I'm just going to say right now, I look forward to seeing you this coming Saturday at Grace Church for this monumental One Cry event. God bless you. Thank you, Dave. Thank you. Appreciate God bless you. Amen. Hi, my name is Brent Brooks. I'm a senior pastor of Reno Christian Fellowship here in Reno, and uh, 
got the honor of being the organizer for the One Cry event we're doing today. Uh, God has been doing something very intriguing in Reno for the last 18 months, and I'm just seeing God crossing all of these boundaries and bringing people together in ways He hasn't before. And you know, the purpose of the One Cry event today was really to bring the leaders together. God is moving our people, and the question is whether the leaders are going to jump on and what the Spirit's doing. And that's what we're seeing today. That's the goal of what we're doing this One Cry event. That's why we brought everybody together, see if we can get the leaders actually leading where God has already gone before them. We have 375 people here today representing 60 different ministries. And I'm convinced if we all come together, we all cry out to God, the Holy Spirit's gonna make it very clear to us what the next steps are. And I think we're gonna find a tremendous move of pastors to unite, to work together more than we've ever seen before. And we've got some vehicles here to help us do that. But I, I think we're gonna see God doing something in Reno beyond what any of us ever anticipated or expected. Push out the powers of darkness and that light would fill our community and that revival would come to our churches, Lord. That your spirit would come, that your spirit would fall upon us, that we would have a new day of Pentecost in which we are changed and transformed. And for the next 30 years and beyond, we would see what happened in the book of Acts as you change home after home after home, school after school after school, church after church after church. Lord, make us into your army, change this town, pour your spirit down and revive us again, we pray in Jesus' name, amen. Okay, whom do we fear? I trust that you were blessed by the word today, and I'm going to close out our program this morning by giving you an opportunity to make the most important decision you'll ever make in your life, and that is to receive Jesus Christ as your personal Lord and Savior. I like to ask the question, are you saved? And if you died tonight, would you make it to heaven? Keep in mind that you can't earn your way to heaven. Salvation and eternal life is a free gift from God Jesus paid the ultimate price by becoming a, a sacrifice for you. And his, his, his blood was poured out for you so that you could be redeemed from your sin. And so today is the day of salvation, the Bible says. Don't let another day go by without making the decision to receive Jesus as Lord and Savior. The Bible says, whoever calls upon the name of the Lord in faith shall be saved. It's as simple as that. And so I challenge you today, make that decision. Say yes to Jesus so you can be born again and your name will be written in the Lamb's book of life in heaven. You're making your reservation for heaven today. So pray this prayer out loud. Mean it with all of your heart to the Lord. Say this, dear God in heaven, I come to you in Jesus' name. I confess that Jesus Christ is Lord. And I believe with my heart that Jesus was raised from the dead. Lord Jesus, come into my heart now and save me and make me a brand new person on the inside. I thank you, Lord, for dying for my sins. Thank you, Lord, for saving me and hearing my prayer. In Jesus' name, amen. If you prayed that and you meant it, I believe you got born again. I'd like to know about it. Please call us or send us an email. Again, thank you for joining our broadcast today, and we'll see you next week. God bless you. And beside the river. Thank you for watching Demonstrations of Faith, a ministry outreach of Faith Alive Christian Center in Reno, Nevada. If you don't have a home church, we invite you to come and connect with us. We have ministry for the entire family on Sundays at 9 a.m. and 10.30 a.m. and Wednesday nights at 7 p.m. Our Connect Youth Ministry meets on Sunday mornings and Wednesday nights. Child care is available for all services. Our location is 120 Hubbard Way, half block east of the Pepper Mill in Reno. You can find us online at faithalive.net or by searching for Faith Alive at all social media outlets. Thanks for watching and join us next week for Demonstrations of Faith. And it's flowing to